Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And our opening hymn is Praise to God, Immortal Praise. God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, let us pray the collect for the day. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow came down from heaven, return there until they have watered the earth making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my words be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I have sent it. For you shall go out in joy and you shall be led back in peace the mountain and the hills before you shall burst into song and the tr trees and the fields shall clap their hands. Instead, the thorn shall come in, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be the Lord for the memorial, for the everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 65, and we'll read it responsibly. You are to be praised, O God in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that your prayers come all of them, also all flesh come, because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose, and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth, and of the seas that are far away. You may pass the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys clothe themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is the Book of Romans, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sin sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, us who walk 
not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of his life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. Excuse me. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when troubles or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what is sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for the, what is sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another, sixty, and in another, thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to be encountering situations where Jesus tells parables. They are a kind of an open-ended riddle. They don't necessarily have a solution, and they can be allegorical. But what a parable really means uh, in, from the Greek, because it's a, it's a genre that we don't really have in our current world. Um, a parable comes from the words para, which means alongside, and bole, which means to put or to throw. So it means <clears throat> casting one thing alongside another thing to make a comparison. And in that, there'll be some unpredictable, some unpredictability. 
Because when you put one thing alongside another thing, you don't always know exactly what the comparison will bring to light. It'll have a lesson, a simple teaching, but something that's not necessarily as obvious as you might think. So when we hear a parable, we ask, what is being compared and why? What is it illustrating? The purpose of the parable is to tease the mind into active thought. And that's why we're still talking about these parables 2,000 years later. So this morning, the parable that we heard is about a wildly lavish and reckless sower of seeds. And to our modern ears, it sounds outrageous and absurd. Who would be so reckless with seeds? No one could afford to waste seed like that. After all, John Deere spends millions of dollars on research and development coming up with ways to plant efficiently. In the spring of this year, they announced that they had developed a new economical planter in a split row configuration that's capable of planting soybeans on 15 inch rows and corn on 30 inch rows. And it can apply dry or liquid fertilizer while planting corn. This is a technique that boosts the yield by approximately 10 bushels per acre. It's simple, it's productive, and it's efficient. And it can be configured and equipped in many ways to help their customers reduce their input costs. And in addition to that, it can be fitted with an optional individual road controller. The planter can help customers reduce their seed cost by 4.3% on average. This kind of technology provides operators with detailed planting performance information and lets them easily make adjustments as needed for optimal efficiency. So the way that we think about planting and sowing in our modern world, putting that alongside this parable that we hear of the sower who scatters seeds all over on all different kinds of soil, not knowing what the outcome will be, gives us an insight into what Jesus is telling us about the kingdom of heaven, about God's reckless grace and love being scattered, doling it out, not knowing what the impact will be. Not concerned about the efficiency, but just spreading the seeds of love and grace lavishly. So it doesn't really matter what kind of soil we are. It's not so much us, but it's really more about the nature of God. A God who freely pours himself out, offering in grace and love, not knowing what kind of heart it lands on. There's a story told by Timothy Paul Jones, who's a professor at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He shares a story about taking his adopted daughter to Disney World for the first time. The little girl joined their family when she was eight years old after another family dissolved her previous adoption. The other family took their biological children 
to Disney World, but they, ele they left this little adopted daughter behind with family friends. And by the time she was adopted by the Jones family, she had heard all about the most magical place on earth, but she'd never experienced it. And so when her new parents shared the plan to take the family to Disney World, a peculiar thing happened. For the months leading up to the trip, Jones wrote that his daughter started acting out in a variety of ways. Her behavior was rebellious and even cruel. And one evening, when he was about to correct her, she looked at him and asked, you aren't going to take me to Disney World, are you? You see, this little girl had learned many years before that she couldn't earn her way there. She had tried to be good, and when her previous family left her home, she realized she wasn't good enough. And so this time, she was living in a way that distanced her from the Magic Kingdom. But her dad reassured her that she was part of the family and that she was going on the trip no matter what. Jones shared a beautiful moment that happened the night of the family's first day in the theme park. Back at the hotel, as he tucked his daughter in bed, he asked her how was her first day at Disney World. And she thought for a moment, and then she said, Daddy, I finally got to go to Disney World, but it wasn't because I was good. It was because I am yours. This is the same message that we get from an amazing, lavish father, a God who dawns grace upon grace upon us and upon all creation, not because we earn it, not because we are good, but because we belong to God. God's grace pursues us, pursues us even when we rebel, when we have untrusting hearts, when we test the limits and push against God's love, he still calls us. God still loves us because we are his, not because of what kind of soil we are. In the reading from Romans, uh, Paul is expounding on that idea of, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do. It's the propensity that we have to continue to follow our sinful desires, to continue to live out the habits that sin has ingrained in our lives. Paul acknowledges that life is tough, that that's a very real force in our lives. But what he tells us is that Christ repairs that. The statement says, if Christ is in us, it's not really if, as in it's a question, the actual translation for that is more like given that Christ is in us or because Christ is in us, your life is subsumed in the life of the history of Christ. It's all because we are his. We belong to the sower. And the parable tells us that that's what the kingdom of God looks like. So this parable really is preparing us for the rest of the parables 
that we will hear and read as we go along through Matthew's gospel. We will come across characters who exemplify all different kinds of soil. Each one will give different results. Many of them will be situations that are all for naught. Not everyone will see God's grace, receive it, and the results may vary. Makes me think of high school reunions. I imagine that many of you have been to your high school reunion at a different time, maybe 25 years, 40 years. And when you go, did the people live up to what was thought about them? Was the one who was voted most likely to succeed? Did they become successful? The one most likely to win an Olympic medal? Did they make it in sports? The one voted most likely to travel the world? Did they ever leave the United States? The one voted most likely to come back and teach at the school. Is that what they did? You see, we can't predict. We can't predict what type of soil. We can't predict when people's hearts are ready to receive the seeds. But our God is a God who sows lavishly, who sows graciously and extravagantly. And when those seeds land on our hearts, they bear fruit. That's what we heard in the first reading from Isaiah. We heard that God sends water, that God sends water to nourish the earth and sends it until the earth sprouts, until new life comes pouring forth from the ground, then it returns to God. <clears throat> and the same holds true for us, that God continues to sprinkle seeds, to sow them on us, whether we are going through phases where our hearts are open or whether we're living in a phase where we are rebelling against God. God doesn't stop sowing the seeds of love and grace and God won't stop until all creation bursts forth with new life and blossoms and blooms the way God intended that it will. You see, our attempts and society's attempts to stop God, they don't work. The parable tells us that because the sower sows seeds, that eventually the crop will be 30, 60, 100 fold. And because we are children, of a God who dons that kind of grace and love upon us, not because we are good or because we are deserving, but because we are his, God calls us to live in the world in the same way as if we lived in the kingdom of heaven, a place where sowers sow love and grace lavishly, trusting that God will bring about the harvest. Amen. And would you join with me now as we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praying separately in our homes, yet united in the spirit, let us together intercede for all the needs of the world. In response to each bid, I invite you to offer your own prayers, silently or aloud, and to conclude each petition with the words, your mercy is everlasting. We pray for our congregation, for all the churches and all the houses of worship in our community. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for missionaries and for newly planted congregations around the world. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for those for whom growth in faith is difficult. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy, your mercy is everlasting. We pray for farms and fields that are devastated by drought. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for all animals in search of water. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for everyone who is suffering from the heat and unable to escape it. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for peace throughout the world. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for the government of our country, state, county, and city. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, Your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for our society to be purged of racism. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, Your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus.
O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your, your mercy, mercy is everlasting. We pray for those without jobs or health care. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for medical workers and researchers. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for all who are sick. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for all who are burdened by anxiety. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray each of us for ourselves. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. We pray for all who have died. O oh God, rain down your mercy on us. Your mercy is everlasting. O oh merciful God, receive these prayers. Grant that your spirit of peace and joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Okay, peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, Jerry and Joe. Peace be with Hi, you. Albert. Hello. Peace be with you, Jill and Mike. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace. Peace. Peace be with you, Carol and Mark. Peace be with you, Jeff. Albert. Why is the whole? And Mary. Peace, peace, peace to you. you. Sorry for your peace brother. You. Yes, thank you. Steve Hall. Hello, yes. Today is the 33rd anniversary of my 33rd birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're looking good. <clears throat> birthday. It's today. Oh, happy it's actually birthday. today? It's actually today, yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. How are you going to celebrate? Um, Zoom. Zoom, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Zoom cake has less calories. 
<laughs> that's true, yes. This is Happy cool. birthday. Thank, Thank you. you. And any other hands? There's one. Yvette, hi. Um, so normally I am just here listening on audio. I'm not normally on camera and Riley's normally not with me because I'm normally at work. Um, so I have no longer am I employed with Amazon, um, but that has been the biggest blessing and God is great. I think he heard really what my soul was saying and the way I truly felt, even though I wasn't really being honest with myself. And he has blessed me to have the support system that I have around me right now to allow me to really move forward in my life in a way that is gratifying to me um, and allows me to stay home um, with Riley when I want to and then just find something that is fulfilling um, to myself and to my soul. And I'm really, really, I feel really blessed. Um, and I read a prayer last night um, out of the book and it literally said, you know, giving thanks for God setting us at a task that was meant for us, even though we did seek it out ourselves and how um, giving thanks for the failures in your life because that sets you on this right path. And I truly believe that I'm definitely set now on, on the right path. Oh, well, I'm so happy to hear that you're taking it well and that you can see God's hand working in it. So that is a blessing. Today, Sue and I, it's, it's, it's actually today is our 34th wedding anniversary. Aww. Oh, there you go. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you celebrating? Well, I think we're going to go over to an art show in um, Huntington Beach. Uh huh. And then um, I go out to dinner. Very nice. <laughs> Let's <Come> eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to start with dessert because it's my anniversary. It's like on your birthday, you get to start with dessert. Because if you start with dessert, there's always room for dessert. Right. <laughs> 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 Blessings to you. Well, uh, Tuesday, our granddaughter Allison gave birth to our, I think, 10th great grandchild. The only thing is, she was a little bit early, weighing in at one pound, uh, six ounces. So we just need prayers um, for the baby, Delilah. And I know because of Charlene, I'm very hopeful. Okay. <laughs> We will all absolutely pray for her and yes, keep the hope because I think we all know stories of little preemies that were born like that, that are now, you know, big strapping, uh, you know, grown ups and healthy and, uh, and we will pray that that's the outcome for little Delilah as well. So hang on to that hope. She was a C-section and, and uh, Ellie said that when she was being delivered, she was flinging her arms and hand, arms and legs all over the place. So I guess she's got Allie's spirit. So. Uh, yeah, it sounds like she's got the spunky spirit she's gonna need. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give an update on Peppermint Ridge. The client that was ill um, seems to be doing okay. Um, and the staff that were ill, they didn't uh, show any symptoms. So um, everyone on Friday, staff and clients included, was tested for COVID um, at Peppermint Ridge. And um, we're just waiting for the results for everybody, including me. So um, they said five to 10 days, but check in three days. So we'll see, I feel fine. So, well, let's hope that that's a sign that you are COVID free and, uh, and that uh, as many of the staff and clients as well. Yep. So, all righty, for sure. Uh, Bob and I celebrated our 55th anniversary. Uh, it was two days ago, but yesterday our daughter had us over for dinner, after which we hung a sheet on the garage door and watched Secretariat, the movie. So it was kind of a late evening because we couldn't start the movie until it got dark. 
but it was wonderful. It was great to uh, get together and actually have a celebration. Oh, that's lovely. Congratulations and blessings for many more years. Thank you. Now, would you join with me as we pray for our birthday boy? And, uh, and then we will pray for all the other celebrations and concerns. Watch over, over your, your child, child, O Lord, Lord as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide with him all the days of his life. Amen. And loving God, we thank you for the love that has uh, bonded Sue and Frank together in marriage and Carolyn and Bob together in marriage and has held them together all of these years. We thank you that through love we are able to grow, that it reveals Christ in us and helps us to become more of who you intended us to be. We pray that you will bless them all with more years of love and marriage and celebration and joy. We thank you also that the Employment situation for Yvette, though it may appear on the surface to not be a good one, that she sees your blessing in it. And we know that you work in mysterious ways. And so we thank you for putting her on the right course. And we thank you for bringing her to this point and guiding her forward, that she also may find an opportunity to live out the purpose that you have for her. We thank you that it has freed up her time to be present with Riley, which is such an important part of her calling. We give thanks that the staff and the clients at Peppermint Ridge are, who've been sick are all doing better. We pray that all those who are awaiting tests, that they would be negative and that the COVID would no longer spread in their community. And we hold up before you little Delilah. We pray that you would help the medical professionals make all the best and right decisions for her to flourish. We thank you for giving her what already seems like a little fighting spirit. We pray for all of the family, for her mom and dad and grandparents and great-grandparents, everyone who is rooting her along, we pray that you would give them hope and strength and comfort that they may be able to instill that to her. Loving God, we hold up all our concerns voiced and unvoiced, knowing that you know what's in our hearts and what we need and that you sow those seeds of grace and love so liberally. Bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want to uh, thank you all once again for, um, for your offerings, um, for sending in your checks, and uh, helping us stay up to date on paying all of our bills. Um, that's, uh, that's very important in our ongoing uh, situation. And uh, 
your your faithfulness and your generosity um, really uh, speaks to your love of Christ and your love of this community. So thank you all so very, very much. Um, in the weekly memo, I did uh, put a notice in again about script, and Melissa did say that we did get an order. So if you're thinking about it, um, please uh, just be in touch with her and she will arrange for you to get your script cards. It's a great way to, uh, you know, add a little extra to, uh, to your support of the church and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it's the script company that gives us the percentage. So it's, uh, it's kind of a wonderful way to help support the church. And now we continue with uh, our hymn number 400 and 70. There's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in His justice which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in His blood. There is no place where sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love was but more faithful, we should thank Him at His word, and our life would be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord. We continue with our tradition of spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly our own church community, we pray. I long to, to offer you praise and thanksgiving. For creation, creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom. Who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The wisdom of God, the grace of God, and the love of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.